Hi, welcome back to Tamara's Tarot Oracle channel. This evening, I am making a video all about the Major Arcana. So for those of you who may be new to tarot, I hope that you find this video helpful and of some use. The deck that I am going to be using this evening is called the Morgan Greer Tarot. And the illustrations are by Bill Greer. I apologize for the glare. <laughs> I love this deck because it is great for beginners and seasoned readers alike, but it really does stick to the basics uh, in the way it depicts symbology in that. And I find that it's not overwhelming to the senses, especially for those who are starting out on their tarot journey. This is a great Rider weight clone. There are many Rider weight clone decks out there. Personally, the Pamela Coleman Smith illustrations never truly appealed to me. I do have the Rider weight uh, Radiant deck, however, and I do enjoy that one. It is a more modern take on the original. There are countless other decks out there who, you know, it's like a spinoff the Rider Waite, um, which is a fan favorite among many, just never quite tickled my fancy. So this would be probably my favorite Rider Waite clone, or at least one of them, <laughs> and the deck that I'll be using to teach you about the Major Arcana. So I have already separated the Major Arcana from the rest of the cards. There are 21, including zero would be 22. And the Major Arcana is basically, uh, it, it translates to life's big secrets or big mysteries. These are the things that are out of our control, that are out of the earthly realm, and therefore are fated to happen, we'll say. Um, they're things that we can gain understanding about, but certainly not things that we can necessarily stop from happening or intervene. Certain things are just meant to be. I do believe in free will as well as fate. And I do believe that we can control our own actions, but we cannot control that of someone else's and certainly not the entire situation at hand. That's where I feel fate comes in. And I, th I think certain things that are meant to happen will and do happen. And it's how we choose to navigate around those things or, um, you know, process those things or deal with those things that essentially create who we are as human beings. Um, the major arcana cards, they're like a journey. They're a journey of self-discovery, of soul growth, and they are essential because without these incredible archetypes or archetypal figures, there wouldn't be a real um, try, tested and true way of, of symbolizing the most important journey of our lives. And that's the, the journey of life and living and self-discovery and you know, gaining fulfillment through the knowing thyself and understanding, you know, not only yourself, but the world around you and, and what makes people tick and, and what makes things the way they are. And I just find all of that super fascinating and why I love tarot so much, because I feel like it's an extension of myself and it is a creative outlet for me in many ways in the form of writing, in the form of articulating, um, just being communicative really in general. And I look at it like a blessing because it is such a beautiful art form. And I think it's a great way to allow us to express those hidden realms within that we may not otherwise be able to tap into and harness and discover for ourselves. And, and that way, unable to share with the rest of the world. And I find that life is full of experiences and full of, it's not about necessarily getting to where you're going, but it's, it's the journey along the way. And it's, it's what you pick up from that and what you absorb from that and learn from that. And that's the whole point to me of the arc of the major arcana 
it's about that journey and it's about the progression of that journey and how you are so much more knowledgeable and so much stronger by the end of it than you were at the beginning. And that's just the natural progression of things. So starting off, the major arcana is zero, the fool. I hope you can see that. Okay, there you go. The fool. The fool is all about innocence. It's almost like being born again. It's about new beginnings, new adventures. It's about taking those innate abilities that we are born with and tapping into them and trusting in them and just taking a leap of faith, taking a risk and just going for it. It's about taking the time to smell the roses and enjoy every single second. And it is so difficult to do and so seldom do we ever have a chance to really be able to do that because life is so busy, especially in North America. Everything's rush, rush, rush. And it's a shame because it just makes it so much more difficult to enjoy the little things. And it's really the little things that amount to the larger things that create the you know whole picture. So the fool is the beginning, the beginning of a journey. It is almost, it's before the first step has even been taken. And it has nothing, or the fool has nothing to compare anything to. It is new to this world. And so therefore it, it follows strictly on its insect, in, insects, instincts <laughs> and, and really their gut and how they feel internally without really realizing or understanding or knowing. And, but that will change as they move along their journey, their sacred quest, we'll call it. So it's a very happy card. It's a very childlike card in a sense. It's like looking at the world with these big wide eyes and just going for it. Okay, so that's the fool at number zero. And as you can see, the dog is either heeding signs of warning, you know, be careful, or maybe coaxing him along, or it's sort of however you'd like to interpret it. Um, I love the white rose of purity and in his sack, I feel like those are all his innate qualities that he was born with and all these unfulfilled potential that he has yet to discover for himself, but that he soon will as he, as he moves along on his journey or on his sacred quest. The next card in our major arcana is the magician at number one. The magician is a manifester. He utilizes the tools and the knowledge to create his own reality. He brings his dreams into realization and he has the capacity and the, the energetic ability to bring about great change. As you can see laid before him on the table, we have all the earthly elements that symbolize the four suits that I will discuss as we move into the minor arcana. This evening, we're just gonna talk a little bit about the major arcana. There's so much to tarot. I'm only really just scratching the surface. Um, and I just wanted to, to just mention a little bit about each card. And so with the magician, we have here the cup, which symbolizes the cups or the chalices, depending on the tarot deck and it's also known as hearts um, and various other variations of, <laughs> but essentially it means relationships, friendships, um, feelings, emotions, creativity, intuition, dreams. So it's a very, it's a very feeling uh, suit or element. Then we have the sword, the swords, the suit of swords, and that's all about the mental, and the challenges that lie ahead and the ideas, the thoughts and the ideas and the intellect and all of that that goes with the element of air. So the cups was water, the swords is the element of air. Then that brings us to um, the wands, the element of fire. It's about action, it's about desire, passion, creativity, sexual awakening, it's about, um, you know, in just taking your dreams and making them into a reality. 
So it's a very action oriented suit and it's full of fire and passion and, and all that great stuff that that drive that essentially gets us what we want in the end. And then we have the pentacles, which is the earthly realm or the suit of the earth. And it's basically everything within the physical realm, you know, with wealth and health and basically material possessions and things like that. And together, the four elements and the four suits create this rounded, this well-rounded um, energy where, where everything's balanced and everything's at perfect harmony. And the magician has all these tools at his disposal and the knowledge that goes along with these tools and the understanding that he has the power, just like we all have the power to create our own destiny. And that's where free will comes into play. And although certain things are going to happen, you know, however you want to um, interpret them or however they affect you. I mean, you can't say good or bad because there's lessons to be learned in everything and you wouldn't know what one is without the other. You need that balance, that yin yang, that feminine and masculine energy that is what creates the universe and, and, and makes it into such a beautiful thing, really, because everything is just Everything is the way it should be. It just makes sense the way things were meant to be. Anyway, <laughs> so that's the magician at number one. So he has the power to create. He has the magic, the energy to bring about his reality. Okay, so number two is the high priestess. She is the gatekeeper into the world of intuition, of higher knowing, of dreams, of all those long-kept secrets, or short-kept, <laughs> but she is in front of a veil that is, is basically between you and that world of inner knowing. And to get to that world of inner knowing, you need to delve in deep, and you need to do soul, some soul-searching and really, really try and pick out the pieces that are only going to be found when you are ready, able, and willing to find them. And that is, that comes with the, you know, experience and that comes with the, the knowledge and the ability in order to tap into your intuition and your higher self and, and, and get to that really spiritual place where, where all those secrets unravel. And it's a quite powerful card, the way she is the guardian of those secrets. And she is so full of knowledge and understanding, but yet she ha she speaks nothing because she doesn't need to. She's just so full of all the things that we try to attain every day. And when we are finally ready, when the universe aligns and it's meant to be known to us, only then will we be able to uncover some of our truths and, and hidden aspects of ourselves. So that is the... High Priestess at number two. I have to shift a little bit. My foot just fell asleep. <laughs> um, number three is the beautiful Empress. She is the mother. She is the nurturer. She is warm and loving and compassionate and caring. She births all ideas, creativity. Um, aside from even the birth of a child, this card comes about and it, it just means an abundance of beauty and harmony and, you know, sensuality and sexuality and femininity. And it is just such a beautiful card. And there is so much symbolism um, in this card and all the cards, yet done in a simplistic enough way that it doesn't override the senses and being borderless, which I absolutely love. <laughs> helps to really be pulled into the, the image and, you know, into the world of Morgan Greer. So it's just very beautiful. So the Empress, number three. At number four is the Emperor. The Emperor is the ruler. He surveys his land. He is reign, he reigns over that particular dominion or his kingdom, so to speak, you know, if you will. And 
he is all about structure and logic and law and that kind of thing. And not everyone may agree, but his way, he believes wholeheartedly is the correct way. It's the tried, tested and true way. And it gets the job done and it gets the results he, he you know, initiates or he sets out for. And his emotions do not get in the way. He is the counterpart of the empress. He is the masculine energy of the empress. And he is a fair ruler, but he is also one that does what needs to be done. It can be a lonely place sometimes, especially if no one stands with you. But he does signify achievement and success. And that comes sometimes at a, oftentimes at a price. Sometimes there are sacrifices to be made in order to get to where we need to go. And what I should have mentioned was that the magician and the high priestess are, they're like the yin yang for one another. So as the empress and the emperor are. And so that's the emperor at number four. And number five is the hierophant. And the hierophant to me comes across as the teacher. So although he's like a pope type figure, like a um, dogmatic figure. Um, I don't really look at it so much as religion as I do about higher learning or better bettering oneself through um, education and that kind of thing. He, he's like the, the key to unlock all this unlimited um, knowledge, really. And he's come forth to tell us that, you know, we need to reassess our values and our morals and and look within our, you know, just decide for ourselves who we want to be and, you know, what set of values we, we, we want to live by and how we want to be viewed by the world. And he comes forth to teach us um, that we need to live by a code, a moral code is what I was trying to say. And it differs from person to person. Um, but Sometimes it's about those aspects of yourself or somebody that comes into your life that can teach you, be a, be a mentor to you and really open your mind up to a different way of thinking. So that is the Hierophant at number five. Now we come to one of my favorite cards in the Major Arcana, and that is number six, the Lovers. This is just the way nature had intended. And whether it's man and woman or woman and woman or man and, ma or, and man, sorry, it really makes no difference. It's just about two souls coming together and enjoying each other the way nature had intended. And it's just this very deep, deep soulful connection. This unbridled passion you know, and it's it's a healthy way of expressing how you feel for one another. And it's a very natural, instinctual thing that we're all born with. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's more heightened in some of us than others. But it's certainly a beautiful way of connecting with another soul. And the lovers is just that really deep, really, you know, it's about the, it's about how, making the choice of, do I want to be with this person? What's the next step I want to take with this person? It's all about choosing, choosing what you want to do and choosing to be with another soul in a very intimate and sacred way. So that's the lovers at number six. Which brings us to number seven, <laughs> the chariot. And by the way, I love the mustache on um, the magician and oh, <laughs> this guy, the chariot. Let me just find him. <laughs> so great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, the chariot is about determination and willpower and confidence and perseverance and just getting the job done through a lot of hard work and ultimately it's a successful outcome 
but it does come after a lot of perseverance and like blood, sweat and tears, basically. This is a very action oriented card. And here it depicts two horses, um, black and white. So that balance again of good and evil, masculine and feminine. Um, I can't think right now, but it, you know, oh, the conscious and the subconscious, like all those good things that keep the universe balanced and at bay. Um, they want to, you know, each one wants to go their own separate way. And so here's the charioteer who is so determined that these two horses are going to go in the one general direction that he has intended, which ultimately is what happens because it is a card that comes forth when you are just going to go for it and you're not going to let anything get in your way and stop you, which is a beautiful thing. So there you go. So long as you're not hurting anyone, including yourself, but sometimes you just need to keep on keeping on. <laughs> um, here we have number eight, this number eight strength card. Um, we have a beautiful goddess with a lion. It's about taming that inner beast. It's about finding that gentle aspect of your nature and and, and letting go of all that rage and, and inner turmoil which is the hardest thing, right? I mean, that's what's, that's where the strength comes in. It's so much easier just to blow up at someone or, you know, say something that you might later regret. But if you could just, if you could just, um, I can't think what I'm trying to say, but if you just approach life and situations in life and throughout life in us, in a gentle and loving way, it's amazing the you know, the outcome or the, the feedback or the response, you know, that you'll get in return. So this is strength and she is trying to calm the lion, the lion, which has, you know, animal instinct to attack. <laughs> She's teaching this lion to become more loving and gentle and trusting and trust is a huge part of it. And that's a really hard thing for a lot of us. So that's where strength comes into, into play. So number eight, strength. Next, we have um, the hermit at number nine. Oh, it's clear. And this is about introspection and solitary and really going within Wherever that may be, you don't need to climb a mountaintop to do that, but it's just about searching your soul and discovering things about yourself that you never knew were possible and about, you know, whether you're journaling it or you're making videos or, you know, some form of creative expression, painting, whatever that may be, that is helping to tune in to aspects of yourself and Pull from those knowledge that, you know, or just your intuition and things like that, that you just you never knew were there. And then one day when you're ready, you can even share that knowledge with those who seek it. Because I believe as human beings, we are put on this planet to help other people in whatever capacity that may be and to inspire them and help guide them. And help them to be the best person they can be just as we strive to do that for ourselves. And I think that's a very beautiful thing. So that's the hermit number nine. Um, number 10 is the wheel. The wheel just keeps turning and it generally means good luck, good fortune. Um, but like anything in life, nothing stands at a standstill. And just like there's good times, there's not so good times. And then there's good times again. And like I mentioned earlier, you need to have one to have the other. And that's how we can truly judge using the reference of our experiences. And to basically enjoy the moment while you're in the moment and appreciate everything you have and everyone you have and 
all the success that you have. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, having a lot of money or anything like that. It just means being alive and being surrounded by those, if you can be, you know, who you care about, who care about you. And it's, it's, you know, just celebrating those moments and, you know, but it's also preparing yourself for the times that may not always be so happy, but also knowing that there is something calming about the fact that change is the one constant thing in life. Nothing else really is. We know for a fact, I mean, there's, you know, you, you're born, you die, like anything in life, the cyclical um, aspect of it, but you, <laughs> I lost my turn of thought, <laughs> but basically change is the one constant thing that we can all anticipate. And some of us are better at embracing it than others, but I think for those who have a tough time, and I am one of those people, um, that's one of my life challenges and something that I'm striving to, you know, working at and, and hoping that, you know, it, it gets easier somehow. But that all depends on my perspective and how I look at things and how I choose to deal with things and, you know, prepare myself mentally for the road ahead. And so it's a work in progress. And I'm sure a lot of people can attest to that. So this is the wheel at number 10. And as you can see, this guy over here has been thrown off. So at one point he was on top, living it up. But like anything in life, as there is a beginning, there is an end to make way for a new beginning. So there you go. Next, we have justice. Justice is number 11. It's about being fair. It's about equality, give and take, balance. Um, it could represent, you know, marriage. It could represent anything, any kind of legality aspect, really. Um, in this particular depiction, the scales are sort of tipped. So it's sort of like it's tipped in your favor, depending on the other cards in the spread and, and, and your reading in that. But it's just about being fair and true. It's about karma, uh, karmic debts being paid. So, I mean, I do believe in karma and I believe that what goes around comes around. And I believe that um, we just have to try our best at doing everything in the most honest and authentic way possible. Okay, that's justice at number 11. Next, we have the hanged man. So I'm just about to put him the other way around. And some think of him as, you know, self-sacrificing, but I don't think of that like you know, I think of it more like, um, yes, you know, there's a sense of suspension there and perhaps stalemate because only in the sense that he's not moving. But I believe that he's deep in thought about looking at things in a whole new light, with a new perspective with fresh eyes. Perhaps he's in a situation that is sort of stale and has kind of reached its conclusion or climax, so to speak. And so you know, he's thinking, okay, is this something that I want to keep going or, you know, doing, or sh do I need to make some changes? And if so, what changes do they need to be? And sometimes this is a great way to assess, reassess where you are, what you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing and all that kind of good stuff. And, and sort of take time out to, to see how things really look, because oftentimes when we are so heavily immersed in whatever we're, you know, whatever's going on in our life, certainly emotionally, we can't see the forest for the trees. We're in it. It's so hard to have a objective viewpoint. So that's why people that are closest to us who, who aren't directly involved often have sounder judgment. But it's also hard to listen because you yourself, you're so emotionally invested, whatever it may be. So this is not... You know, unlike the hermit, the hermit sort of is off to off by himself. I feel like he doesn't necessarily have to be by himself, but it's still a way of of taking time out to 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 look at things differently for the better. So that is the hanged man at number twelve. Number thirteen is death. Now that scares a lot of people, but it shouldn't. Death doesn't necessarily mean someone's going to die. 
it often means it's a form of trans transformation and renewal and rebirth. It's coming forth to tell us that, as I'd mentioned just now, with every end comes a new beginning, a fresh start, as the fool best represents. The purity of the white rose shows life, new possibility, even though the grim reaper up above signifies death. But as you see in, in the background, you can interpret that as the sun setting or the sun rising. But just like every sun sets, a new sun or a new sun, <laughs> the sun shall rise again. So a new day is dawned. Look at that as a fresh start. And sometimes certain things just no longer serve us. And I believe, you know, every everyone comes into our life for a reason, a season or a lifetime. And everything that we go through is an experience, a stepping stone. And it helps to build towards that greater knowledge of knowing ourselves as well as we possibly can. And most of us spend our lifetimes and very, very few, but not, not enough of us perhaps really figure it all out. And I, I, I find it so incredibly uplifting and enlightening when I hear stories of, you know, people who are into their golden years and they feel like I finally arrived. Like I get it now. I know who I am and who I meant to become. You know, I mean, it, it's never too late. It's never late, too late to do anything. Um, and I love that because every decade, every year of every decade in their life has been one more clue to the bigger picture. So that's death number 13. Now, next we have, oh gosh, not the world. Sorry, temperance. <laughs> temperance is number 14. It's about balance. It's about moderation. It's about, um, like I said, balancing the, the mind, body, and spirit, which I believe the triangle symbolizes it's about being patient and waiting, waiting for the right time. The universe will always let us know when that is. I feel like once the universe is aligned, then it's time that we can, you know, go forward and go forth with whatever it was that we were waiting for the perfect timing to do, to accomplish. So that's temperance. He's like a guardian angel and he's enjoying just, you know, meditating or just feeling whole until it's time to act again. So in order to have the energy and the sheer determination and all that, that the chariot portrayed, you need to also take time to rest and recuperate and regroup and wait you know, for the time to act to come again. Because if we just keep going, 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 we're going to burn ourselves out and that's unhealthy because then we don't have the stamina or the staying power to, you know, attain our goals. Okay, so number 14, temperance. Number 15 is also another scary one for a lot of people, um, the devil, it's never been a favorite card of mine. Uh, <laughs> this one is a little bit dark, um, but it's basically about the ego. It's about, uh, you know, deceit. It's about self-indulgence. It's about addiction. It's our shadow self. It's the dark aspects of the human soul or the human psyche that if we give into, then we allow that to feed, to feed off our fears and our, our anxieties and all the unhealthy things that keep us from staying on the path that we're meant to travel on towards attaining, you know, higher knowledge of ourselves. And so to know these aspects is to understand that there is always dark, darkness in the light. So there will always be shadow with light. Light will shine down and create shadow with all the various objects that come, you know, between the light and the dark. And so it's important to, you know, have that self-realization because only through that can we truly grow and become more knowledgeable of who we are. And it's not just about 
the happy, shiny aspects of oneself. It's also about the other things that are a lot more difficult to deal with and a lot more difficult to um, admit to. And those are the things that are going to help us grow stronger once we've we've acknowledged them and we've conquered them. So this is a very powerful card. And this is to let us know that we need to face whatever it is that might be hindering our soul growth. Okay, so that's the devil at number 15. Number 16 is another <laughs> sort of scary card to a lot of people. This is the tower. This is crisis. This is the roof has been blown up, you know, blown off over your head and you have absolutely no control over what's happening because I feel like, you know, this card comes forth, especially when you've left things the way they are for, for far too long. It's the universe's way of coming in, intervening and letting you know that something's got to be, sh you know, shaken up in order for drastic change for the better to take place. And it's always after the storm. There is there a sense of renewal? And, and, you know, that is a beautiful thing. It is therapeutic, cathartic, and most needed and necessary if we are going to continue growing. And we can't do that unless these things happen. And at the time, we absolutely do not, <laughs> you know, and cannot always comprehend or accept. But in the end, we look back and we are so much wiser and stronger for these types of occurrences to take place. So this is the tower. This is number 16. Number 17 is the star. So after a time of upheaval and even great destruction comes a time of renewal and regeneration and hope and faith and even wishes granted. And that's the beauty of the star. She hasn't been destroyed. She hasn't been beaten. She's still there. She is still whole. She's picking up the pieces, the things that she thought could never be put back into place. And she goes on because that's the strength of spirit. And that's the beauty of this particular card. That it's through all of the chaos and the mayhem and the turbulence that you you find enlightenment and you have one of those aha moments <laughs> and sometimes it does take crisis in order to to come to terms with that something that could have been right under your nose the whole time but because we have so much of the ego that gets in the way and you know with that comes the denial and the self degradation and and all that stuff, you know, it's hard to see what's right in front of you. And it's hard to make sense of it in a more logical and rational way, as opposed to just emotional. So that's why each one of these cards in the Major Arcana are so important and speak volumes for, you know, a person's soul and the journey that that soul goes on throughout a lifetime. This is the start number 17. The moon is number 18. The moon is about night journeys and about dreams and intuition and the subconscious. It's also about confusion and not really knowing full truths of, of the situation because of all the shadows cast. And it's about having the courage to face your fears and to move through the obstacles that may lay in your path and to keep on going because soon enough you will reach enlightenment by traveling up to the path that leads to this wonderful higher knowing where everything starts to become clear and all the pieces start to fall into place and all of a sudden, you know, everything's illuminated. So that's a great card as well. It's also a very um, emotional card and 
comes forth oftentimes when I draw, you know, a card and I'm going through that kind of state. And this one is just, yeah, and just speaks volumes and it's very mysterious and it's very poignant for delving into your emotions and facing your fears because it's only then that we can make sense of what they are and basically confront them and not be afraid of them anymore because we know that they can't hurt us. So that's the moon, number 18. Almost done, because <laughs> I just noticed that it's getting kind of lengthy, this video. This is the sun at number 19. This is revitalization. This is vitality. This is joy and happiness and just an abundance of good health and creativity. The sun is a more masculine energy, whereas the moon was more feminine. And again, you'll get lots of those masculine and feminine aspects throughout the deck to balance and well, you know, have, make it a more, more well-rounded um, divination tool. And the sun is just a very joyous time and it's just a very happy, beautiful card. And the energy is quite you know, joyous, <laughs> for lack of a better word. So there you go. The sun at number 19. At number 20, we have judgment. Judgment is symbolic to me because it's rebirth, renewal. I mean, it's like death in a sense, but it's, it's just, it's getting a second chance. It's just living out your true life's purpose. It's heeding the call. It's like the phoenix rising from the ashes. And it comes forth to let us know that we need to live as authentically and truthfully as possible in order to fulfill our life purpose. So this is judgment at number 20. And last but not least is the world card. When you've come to the world card, you've completed that phase of your life and with that comes knowledge and 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 a feeling of of accomplishment a true sense of accomplishment and victory and it's just everything being brought together it's all everything that's been culminated throughout your journey and everything is whole and unified and and possible the possibilities are endless and and everything comes into alignment and the universe is as it should be. I mean, it's everything just makes sense and you've grown and you've discovered so much about yourself throughout your journey through the major arcana that this is a card that comes forth to let you know that you finally arrived. And it can also oftentimes signify travel, which is very exciting. So I need to wrap this video up. That was the major arcana from my Morgan Greer deck. Separately, I bought the, the Book of Tarot. It just gives a little bit more insight to the symbolism or symbology of the cards. Um, it is illustrated with the Morgan Greer Tarot, and it is written by Susan Gerla, oh gosh, Gerulskis, or Ulskis Estes. I'm so sorry, I just totally botched that name. But it's not super, I mean, there isn't like a ton of, of information in here. Um, but if you are interested to, sorry, the glare is not so great. If you are interested to um, purchase it, I got it off eBay. It wasn't very much. It's just nice because the little white book that comes with the deck isn't super concise. I mean, or maybe it is too concise, but the book just gives a little bit more information and insight into the Morgan Greer deck, which is a beloved among many. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be back with the four suits of the minor arcana. So I hope you stay tuned and please like this video. If you do um, subscribe, that would be great. I need the support. I've just started out on this channel as I have mentioned in my previous video and I'm very excited to be sharing my love for tarot with those of you who are watching. So thank you so much again. This is Tamara's Tarot Oracle, and I will see everyone soon. Bye. <laughs>